we are living in the century of change. But if future generations are to remember us more with gratitude than with sorrow, we must achieve more than just the miracles of technology. We must also leave them a glimpse of the world as God really create, made it, and not just as it looked when we got through with it. I'm Alan Entage. Hope is real, and I share hope. Welcome to I Share Hope, the podcast where world leaders share their real stories of hope and how you can use actionable hope to start changing your life today. And now, here's your host, Chris Williams. Alan? Yeah, hey Chris. Man, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. No problem. So, let me make sure I get the name right. Okay. So, Alan, is it Imtage, or how do you say your last name? Imtage is fine. Uh, how would you say it? No, no, that's, that, it depends on where you are. <laughs> I'm in Canada, it's Imtage because, it, because they pronounce it as the French would. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it's Imtage, it's fine. <laughs> okay. We'll go with Imtage because we're not in Canada. Right. Okay, so you probably got the show notes and the interview 101 document that has the five questions. All right, good. So, as you know, the, the show is really yours to do with as you want. I'll ask the five questions, and I'll kind of explain the rules again once we start recording. Okay. And um, you just answer the questions however you want. A lot of people get into personal stories, and they get into, you know, what really means something to them. Yeah. And, man, this is your deal. You make it what you want, and I'll just keep it moving and guide you through it. And Okay, cool. Other than that. Realized, hold on one second. Yeah. I just realized that my... Um, I don't have power. There we go. All right, We've got power. Man, you look like you're sitting on a boat with that no, stuff behind I, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the quietest. The, they're doing work across the street, so this is the quietest room in the house at the moment. Too bad you're not on a boat. That sounds even better. Yeah, it's no, but it's it's full of these things. <laughs> Hey, well, if I look down, I'm not texting. I'm uh, making show notes here on my iPhone so I can keep up with audio points and where the interview starts and stops. And if you say awesome quotes, like I'm sure, you know, everybody says something really cool, then I want to make sure I write it down so I don't forget. <laughs> All right. So you can hear me good. You're still happy? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Alan Imtage, you've been super effective. Uh, foundational to the internet. I, so I've read a little bit about you and I, I don't dig in too deep with any interview before the interview because I really don't want to know the answers to all the questions. But if I'm right, you're credited with creating or helping to create this first search engine model for the internet. And you've served as a chair on these committees and councils that have developed things like URL and all these FTTP colon slash colon slash slash all the stuff that I'm confused about constantly. This is your this is stuff coming out of your brain, right? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, all of those things. Yeah, um, I uh, I came up with the first uh, search engine, um, well, what's considered the first search engine, um, internet based search engine. Of course, there were there were things that could search through text before that, but mm -hmm. this was the first. Uh, system that allowed you to uh, um, basically discover, uh, build an index of things that you could find on the internet. So that most mo most people consider, you know, what what Google does in uh, in the very large scale, uh, and Bing and uh, you know, Yahoo and all the other search engines. Um, this was the first, the prototype for all of those things. Yeah. Wow. So are they still using that basic platform underneath their engines today? Well, they're using the same techniques okay. uh, that we developed, but um, they're not. Uh, I mean, you know, there are many. This is this is the great 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 grandfather of, of, of all the search engines. But uh, they're. I mean, the same basic technology is still used. You know, they go out, mm. gather the information, make an index, and allow you to search it. That's that's the basic mechanism. So. That's complicated enough for me, and I'm impressed for sure. So you're now with is it Mediopolis? Mediopolis, and yeah. tell me a little more about what you do and what Mediopolis does. Uh, well, Mediopolis for a long time was was uh, we did we built uh, sort of big sophisticated websites, and uh, that has become less of a of a market nowadays because uh, a lot of the functions that you would uh, you know would have been hand crafted in in the past 
you can buy off the shelf now. I mean, a lot of that stuff has been commoditized. So we've sort of shifted our focus somewhat, and uh, we now use our technology to invest in uh, startups. Wow. Um, so we, we use our, you know, we have with, between the, the tech technologists and the dog, um, <laughs> it, the, um, uh, between the technologists that we have here, we have, you know, a good, oh, I don't know, maybe 70, 80 years of experience uh, in technology. So we use that to, um, to uh, you know, w companies come to us and it, there's, a, there's a, you know, serious lack of technologies out there nowadays. It's, mm -hmm. it's very uh, specialized skill and takes a long time to really, you know, get up to speed. Um, and so uh, we, you know, they come to us with ideas and we can then choose to invest in their companies with our technical knowledge and then we use that as part of our investment. For the That's really awesome. That really is. I've been involved in a, a few startups along the way and boy, having somebody who's willing to share resources like that, even if, I mean, some people put in cash, some people put in time, but those, those critical skills and the resources are just expensive to come by and that's a really great service. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're doing it to 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 you know we get equity in the company in return, but uh, but I mean it's always you know with a startup it's always a crapshoot you know you never yep. know what, what's what's going to happen. <laughs> I've definitely done my fair share of failing in startups too. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you know how this works. So we ask a thousand people around the globe these five questions about hope. And um, you're from Barbados. Are you there now? Where are you at now? I am currently in Provincetown in Cape Cod. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's, uh, I, spend, uh, I spend six months of the year here and six months in Barbados. That's great. Yeah. So questions how these work. We're, we're looking to really just broadly reach a, a global market with the concept of hope and how to use hope and how it's impacted people's lives in every sector. So you're obviously way deep into the technology world and somebody that that has the roots that go way back there so i'm really really do appreciate you taking the time and answering these for us so anybody who's searching for this from your vantage point or from uh, someone from barbados or someone in the technology world, there's so many things that you're going to have that really reach a certain population kind of if you think of it as every eight million people on the planet would get one representative on the survey. That's kind of how the math works out. <laughs> so you are the, the one for the 8 million IT people out there. How about that? <laughs> I, I don't know about that. But, <laughs> uh, you, should, you should interview Elon Musk if you really want to do that. So and I'll definitely give it a try. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. So question one, and you go wherever you want to on these, these answers, and I appreciate, again, just any input you have. We have a lot to learn. So question one. What is your favorite quote about hope or your definition of hope? Well, actually, when, when, uh, when I saw this, I was, I was really wondering what I would use for that. Um, and then I realized that I have one that I use all the time because it's the, it's the signature. People don't tend to do this much anymore. It's an old habit of mine is to put a signature on the bottom of emails. And, uh, you know, it's just a standard template that goes on the bottom of every email. That I have, and, and I thought, you know, this is the one that resonates. Initially, it doesn't necessarily sound like hope, but I'll explain. So the, the quote is um, actually from uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, and um, I believe I first saw it on a visit to Bryce National Park, um, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in the United States. It's just spectacular, um, and, and an inspiration for hope because it is just so beautiful. Um, but I, and I and I believe it. I saw it first on a plaque there, and I thought it was from there. But I did a little research through Google, of course, and um, and came up with the fact that it was actually uh, first said uh, when Johnson, President Johnson, September twenty first, nineteen sixty five, and he was opening the Assateague uh, Island Seashore National Park, and the quote is. We are living in the century of change, but if future generations are to remember us more with gratitude than with sorrow, we must achieve more than just the miracles of technology. We must also leave them a glimpse of the world as God really create, made it, and not just as it looked when we got through with it. And, and that really resonates with me, even though I'm an atheist. Um, there are other versions of the quote that says the glimpse of the world as it was created, but so on. Um, and it, it's, for me, that is a, a, 
it's a it's a a call for hope. It's a call to say, you know, we don't have to trash everything around us. We can live in a more hopeful way. We can lo- live uh, uh, in a way that um, that preserves both the uh, the technology, uh, you know, keeps our technology developing, and yet preserve the environment and and uh, uh, and and you know this this is amazing world that we live in, and it is a call to to hope that we can achieve that. So that's my angle on it. It's it's maybe not in itself a uh, a hopeful sta- uh, a statement but it, i think it's a call for hope i think that's a great definition and a great call for hope and it doesn't have to be a definition but a a, a focus and a target to hope a, a great idea a great great quote so tell me who's shared the most hope with you if, if that's kind of where you're going with hope who's been that giver of hope for you um i think the person that probably inspired me most um, for hope was um, somebody who uh, was, uh, you know, I knew since I was born, um, uh, or I, and until she passed away several years ago, um, which is my mother's aunt. Now, my mother, my mother's mother died when she was six years old, and she had three sisters. My mother had three sisters, and uh, at the time, and um, they were, you know, left with motherless, and so her father's um, sisters basically took over raising, helping raise the, 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 the these four kids, and uh, they were they were very intelligent women. They were very powerful women, and they had the the, the it sort of I don't think anybody planned this, but each one of them tended sort of took a took one of the kids as, as their, as their you know, primary focus. So there was a bunch of mothers, basically, you know, surrogate mothers, and, uh, and each one has the, had their own mother. And uh, the one that my mother had was uh, a woman, by, uh, we, her name was Constance, we called her Connie, Auntie Connie. And, um, and she was a teacher, a headmistress, a principal, um, headmistress in the British um, uh, way of things, so I'm going to silence all my devices, um, and, um, and she was, um, she was the person that would wake me up at five o'clock in the morning to see the comics, you know, she was the person that would sit down and, and, uh, and, uh, listen with me as we listen to science programs on the BBC World Service, or take me to the, the fish market, and, point out, you know, things about the fish, you know. Uh, we actually had a turtle. We had a sea turtle, uh, a pet sea turtle, uh, believe it or not. Uh, that that is so not fair, man. We're stuck with, like, box turtles and mud yeah. sliders. Yeah, we had, <laughs> we had a full-on sea turtle um, because they had discovered it. My mother's sister had discovered it um, when it hatched one day. She was on the beach, and she, uh, and she thought that she would um, be able to... Um, hold on a second, sorry. This is the problem of doing this in real time. Sorry. Oh, you good. Take your time. Yeah, getting getting calls from somebody else. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just gonna send them a text. Is that is that no? Bill Gates? Bill Gates calling you about some search engine issue? No. Oh, too bad. Um, <laughs> actually, no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't talk to Bill very often. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. So, um, anyhow, um, yeah, anyway, they caught this, they, they caught this baby sea turtle and they raised it. And, you know, it, it, it was that kind of environment, which was very much, um, about, uh, education in a fun way, but also looking w- with a hopeful, with a, with a, um, with a very positive spin on life. You know, this, the world was out there full of, of, of amazing, um, um, you know, wonders, and you should, you know, try to to see these things and experience these things, and 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 you know, and uh, and it's it's really it really colored my my view of uh, I you know I love traveling. I've I've traveled since I was a kid. Um, I just came back from a twelve country tour, um, which was amazing. Um, and it's, you know, that has really colored how I approach the world because 
everything. I call myself a, a new experience junkie. Um, and that's pretty much what I am. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much try every, anything once, almost anything once. So, man, that's, but, so yeah. I think she was by the, by, I think probably the most hopeful person, um, that influenced me in my life. Hmm, good answer. That's a great, sounds like a great family. It really cool the way they structured all that and got around you all as kids. Yeah. Wow. All right. So question three, then, you know, you've done a lot, you've been successful, you know, a lot of people and been a lot of places. Where do you, where do you say, you know, there was a time back there where I needed hope or had to use hope in a pretty practical way because Maybe life hasn't always been as nice as it looks for you now. Um, kind of take us back and paint the picture. What, what's going on back there? I think probably the most, um, uh, I think the, the, the point that hope was uh, most needed in my life was when I was a teenager. Um, when I was probably, um, I don't know, uh, 14 13, 14, 15, 16, something like that, and uh, and coming to turn, uh, living in Barbados, which is a small, conservative, not not radically so, but you know, a small a small town, and, you know, two hundred eighty thousand people, um, and and relatively small, and coming to terms with the fact that I was gay, and coming to terms with the fact that um, this was not something that was acceptable um, in the context. You know, that we're talking 30 years ago, yeah. uh, of 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 the society not being able to express that. Uh, it's a very isolating, a very um, um, uh, it's isolating. You know, there's not a lot of people you can talk to about. I had I had a, I, I I finally did when I was about 17. I came out to my first my cousin who mm -hmm. I was close to, and she was fantastic, and 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 you know, and she was very very supportive and and so on. Uh, but I think that was probably the point which, and I think it's true for a lot of gay teenagers, even now, you know, even 30 years later, um, particularly um, in non-Western countries, in particularly if you're in Russia these days, or if you're in the Middle East, or if you're in Africa, you know, it's, you, it's, it's not just a matter of being lonely, it's a matter of, in some cases, life or death, you know, in, in some cases, you you literally have your life um, at risk if people discover that you're gay. Um, so you know I I I'm very much a um, although I never made one of the videos I'm very much a, um, a believer in the you know uh, it gets better um, uh, campaign that they ran a few years ago at least as it applies to the West. You know, I wish it were. I wish it were more hopeful in other parts of, uh, of the world, um, and hopefully things will get better. In a lot of those places, it can get a lot worse. Um, you know, if you're if you're a, if you're a, a young gay man or woman in Uganda, you're you know, life's rough. You know, uh, in Russia, I have friends in Russia, and it's rough. Um, so I think, you know, these um, these kids. I, I really, uh, I do wish hope for them, you know, that they can see hope, that they can see a future, uh, because even now, you know, the rates of uh, teenage, of suicide of teenage young gay people is still um, um, several times what it is for their straight peers. So um, that would be, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, there's, it, 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 it hasn't finished. What I went through, people are still going through, and a lot worse. Yeah, they are, and that's really sad discrimination. So, growing up then, thirty years ago, I mean, the world was a different place on those issues. It, wow, so different. So, and you're right, it still is in a lot of places in the world. It, did your family, your cousin, accepted you? Did your family, um, mom, dad, grandparents, and schoolmates? I mean, wow, lots at stake there. You know. Well. Well, I, it took me um, it allowed what, what I what what I I made it a point to leave Barbados um, to go to college to go to university because um, I wanted to see you know I wanted to lose myself in a in a larger uh, environment where not everybody knew who you were and you weren't uh, you know the, just basically the representative of your mother and father you know the small version of your mother and father 
Um, so I ended up in uh, McGill University in Montreal. And uh, McGill sits literally, actually, literally physically sits at the center uh, of the city. Um, and it has a huge campus in the middle of the city. And it's a you know, large cosmopolitan uh, French speaking or bilingual city. Um, and, uh, you know, I encountered, uh, friends, uh, the first two people that I met in class, um, are still two of my best friends, um, uh, from 30 years ago. One of them was just visiting me here in province now. Um, and, um, they, it, you know, it allowed me to be, be myself and it gave me the strength to be able to go back home and, you know, give the news to my parents, and, and so on. I told my sister before that she was fine. And um, my father, um, when I first came out, my father said to me, you're my son, and I love you, and if this is what you makes you happy, you know, and, you know, have a good time. Remember, it was also in the middle of the uh, AIDS crisis. This was 1985, and uh, so their big concern was that I would take care of myself. You know, because um, that was that was the the height of the the, the hysteria. You know, um, so uh, it was. Uh, I think it was tough for them from that point of view, um, and just coming to terms with it. I think you know, kids um, and 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 uh, and you know, parents have a vision of what they expect you, what your life is going to be like, and having uh, and you know, going to your wedding and the grandchildren and all this kind of stuff, which nowadays doesn't seem that big a deal because. You know, you can get many people can get married and 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 have kids and so on and so forth. But again, 30 years ago, this was not the vision. This was not uh, a path that most people envision. So, um, you know, uh, but you know, my family is fantastic. They were, you know, there was never any there was never any question of uh, rejection. But you only see that as the child in hindsight. You know, you always imagine the what the worst possible scenario can be, and try to prepare for that rather than, you know, what the what the what the best scenario is be. You know, the, so for, from that point of view, I tend to be a bit of a realist rather than an optimist. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I understand. Great story. So, question four then, with with the background you have, got a great definition of hope and a great or quote towards hope. An aunt who just invested so well in you and a story that you've lived through and come out more hopeful. How are you sharing hope today? That's question four. What are you doing around your world? Um, well, um, one of the things that I do um, every day, um, and this is kind of a mixed bag because it's not all, all going to be hopeful, but uh, um, I think most of it is hopeful, um, is that um, I tend to use Facebook as a blog. Um, and I um, and I publish anywhere between ten and fifteen stories that I've discovered on the uh, on the web, um, and it can be anything. It can be politics. It can be religion. It can be um, it can be um, science. There's a lot of science stuff, computer stuff. Uh, you know, pretty much anything. Anything that catches my interest. And um, and so I have probably um, about I don't know. I don't know what the totals are, probably about 2,000 people, I guess, um, that, um, you know, between friends and followers and, and people on Twitter and that kind of stuff, because I, I echo the same stuff that I post on Facebook onto Twitter. And, um, and so, sort of daily, I, you know, it can, be, it can be some video with a kitty cat um, doing something stupid, or, um, you know, it, and, it, and it, can be, it can be serious stuff as well. I mean, you know, I've just started to rack up, queue up the stuff for tomorrow, and uh, one of the things is going to be on torture. But it's actually a hopeful story on torture. Today, the United States Senate passed an amendment, 78 to 21, um, which banned torture, um, the, the, you know, uh, which is amazing. Uh, it shouldn't need to be done, uh, but the fact that, um, that there are 78 senators that are willing in, in, in an environment of fear that we have been living in for now, you know, a good 15 years, um, that, uh, that they stand up there and, and, uh, and, and fairly strong criticism of the 21 that voted against it. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, um, that, I think that in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell, I try to, um, 
you know, explore the world around us. A lot of it is about, um, I have certain themes that I keep coming back to. The, uh, the, the robot revolution is one of the ones that I talk about all the time. The upcoming, you know, the, 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 the massive changes in automation that are happening right now and, and that a lot of people don't realize just how fundamentally ch changed our society is going to be um, by these by these technology developments and and people have a very bad um, track record of, of um, foreseeing what how rapidly technology increases we are on an upward curve and it's an exponential curve and we keep trying to extrapolate you know from from our history what what the future is going to be like and you can't do that when things are uh, increasing exponentially. We just we, we, we really have no idea the, the changes that are about to, to, to hit us. And I'm talking and I'm talk talking twenty or thirty years. I'm talking in five years. I'm talking you know I'm talking in three years. Um, this stuff is uh, going to radically re uh, re uh, uh, shift, um, uh, reconfigure our society um, in ways that we have only. We, barely the inklings of what 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 is going to happen i think it's going to be a, a rough transition i think the potential for it being really good on the other side is um is high i hope um but i think we're in for a lot of disruption you know and uh what people and and that will be what people make of it you know some people will do well some people will not yeah i think um, you're right but i think it, it's going to be it's going to be you know, nothing compared to what our grandparents are. <laughs> think of what are the changes that our, our grandparents went saw, you know, um, uh, through, you know, World War Two, then the moon shot and then computers, you know, a television, uh, uh, you know, the, the Concord, all of this kind of stuff. And when you think what comes next makes that pale in comparison, you know, it's uh, it's it's a. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a interesting ride. It's exciting. It's also a little scary. Yeah. Uh, but all together, yeah. yeah. You know, that's a great, um, well thought through and simple way to share hope. I haven't heard anybody say it the way you said. So you just gave a Facebook example of being intentional about what you're searching for, what you're engaged in, where your interests are personally, and then sharing those things to help people look forward and and be involved in issues and be involved in what's coming or what they can do. It doesn't take long to find something that's forward thinking and, and getting people motivated the right way and just share it on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I have to go out and volunteer 10 hours a week or give this. But there's simple ways to share. That's a great idea. Absolutely. And, and the amazing thing is, you know, I have a core group of probably 10 or 15 people who daily respond to the things that I post. And, you know, and I encourage discussion. All of my all of my posts are public, so mm -hmm. anybody can, join, can follow me on on Facebook. And, uh, and yeah, so Facebook and, and Twitter handles. Let me have them. What are they? Uh, Facebook is uh, Alan Dot Entich. Okay. And uh, uh, Twitter is Alan Entich, one word. Okay, so Alan Dot Entich or Alan Entich. So it's A L A N E M T A G E. Uh, a, a dot between the two. If it's uh, which one? Facebook. Okay, and one solid word, Alan Imtage, if it's Twitter. Yep. Perfect. Okay, question five then. Mm -hmm. Simple ways that I can begin sharing hope today. So I, I'm not well known. I, I didn't create a search engine that helped billions of people. Um, <laughs> I haven't done some of those things. But for me and the other listeners in 40 plus countries now, how can we start sharing hope or growing in hope today? Oh, I think... I think you know um, it's it's one of those things. One of one of the one of a, a very interesting piece of research that has come out over the last couple of years and been replicated is that emotions spread through social networks. That people that you don't even know, right? Because you don't know them directly. They're friends of friends. I mean, if this is a third level, a third. Um, up to you know up to three people away can affect your mood and that's an amazing that you know we're social animals at the end of the day I keep telling people we're all chimpanzees right we're all we're social animals we we, we, we our entire psych psyche is built 
around socialization, right? And, 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 and living in groups and cooperating and all that kind of stuff. And what they've found is that good moods and bad moods both transmit through social networks. And that you can be, you can choose to be, and I'm not saying that people who are, this is not to say that people who are depressed or anxious or whatever, choose to be that way. That is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you can, if you are, you know, if you are in a, uh, a, a good enough place, if you are, uh, uh, you know, create a, 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 a inner emotional life, if you are lucky enough to make that a positive emotional uh, uh, experience, that you can, that, that affects not only the people that are directly around you, but their friends and their friends as well, right? Um, and so realize that you have a much stronger um, influence, um, particularly if you are a leader, you know, particularly if you're one of those people who has, you know, the group of friends, who's the one that organizes people and, and gets the dinners together or organizes the vacations or, if, you know, if you're one of those people, um, your, your personal mood transmit through your entire social network and it doesn't mean that you have to you know join a, a volunteer group i mean great if you want to go help puppies go help puppies you know i think puppies are wonderful um but you know if you if you if you you can you can do it on a personal level and an effect you know if you have 15 friends and each one of them has 15 friends and each one of them has 15 friends you're you're pretty soon talking about you know a lot of hundred, a couple hundred people, um, and you know, you can you can do that. You can be the center of hope, optimism, of of, of positive thinking. Of of you know, I'm not telling you to run around, you know, with flowers in your hair and singing kumbaya all the time. I'm just saying, you know, don't don't you know, try where as possible to take you know, take the 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 the, the positive side of things. You know, it's very easy to fall into the negative side of things. You're right. It is easy to fall into it. And, and that's a great point. We're, we're really impacting three generations of conversation in your social networks. If it's your, if it's your gossip circle at work or in your neighborhood or at school, or if it's your social network on Twitter, yep. it, it goes three conversations past you. And when well, you're right. The social network, the, the internet social networks can amplify that a thousand fold. Yeah. You know, you can you can take. I, there was a, I don't know if you saw it. There's, there was this silly um, uh, series of pictures that went around with this husky uh, the other day, where um, the, the, the 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 owner, the woman, um, uh, pretended to throw the ball. Yes. And yes. You saw the sequence of and the and the, the husky. I mean, I burst out laughing, right? <laughs> right. And I and I posted it when I first saw it, and I think it's been shared 50 times. Yeah, it's time. huge. Yeah. It's huge, and everybody's seen this now and whatever it is, and it brings a smile to your face. And yeah. all it is is a picture of four, four little pictures of, of, a, of a dog. And, you know, and, and we're, of course, projecting on that dog our, 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 our own emotional thing. But it's, it's, it's hysterical, right? It's yeah. really, you know, and if you can bring a smile to somebody's face, even in the smallest way like that, you know, mm -hmm. you've done something good. You know, that, that's not a bad thing. That's a great point. All right, so... Man, good, good advice, simple, simple advice, and a great story for so many people around the globe who are, who are growing up in a place or in a way that may not be quite um, the norm that the rest of their culture might think it should be. And you've given a great example of how to live through that and how to, how to make it something hopeful. And I love your quote. I just wish I could meet your aunt and tell her thank you for sharing hope with you so you share hope with us. All right, so you've got so much going on on Facebook and Twitter, your website, all the things you're doing. So again, Facebook is Alan.Imtage and Twitter is at Alan Imtage. Yep. And, and then uh, website, so professional, give me some more places here we can go. Uh, website, I haven't, I, I've, I've been really bad. I haven't updated it recently, but uh, of a, all people who should have an up-to-date website, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, the, the the what is it? The uh, the, 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 the cobbler's cobbler. kids have no shoes. Shoes, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I am um, uh, alanemtage.com is uh, a collection of my um, 
my photographs. I do uh, photography. Wow. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, um, I do uh, landscape. A lot of landscape photography. So you can go on there and see uh, a bunch of my photography. Man, would you email me a collection of your maybe top three, five, ten, whatever? Because I'd love to have a little slideshow on. We two of the show notes at isharehope.com. Your show notes and all of this will be there. I'll have all the links to Alan's info and maybe even a little slideshow that um, can show off some of that talent. I can. I'll tell you what. I have a there's a there's a Facebook uh, album, perfect. Um, that's open. That was at one point I was doing a, um, a photo of the day thing, and they had a lot of the. Uh, now, if you want, it, it depends on what quality you need them at, but th- that'll be a good start. You can pick them out. And that's great. The full that right man. Out. That's really great. All right, so. Alan, let's take a quick break here. You can see there in the notes, we take a quick break and get a few quotes from you. So what we do at the beginning of your episode is somewhere like your quote about hope or something, we'll take a little snippet of that, put it at the very beginning, right before we introduce you. And then, so I want to have that quote, whatever we find, and then you saying, I'm Alan Emtage and I share hope, or I'm Alan Emtage and however you want to introduce yourself and I share hope. Right. So, I'll, uh, I'm going to mute my mic here, and you can uh, fire off one, two, or ten quotes. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to, yeah, I, I wasn't, I was, I didn't know if I what to come up with with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll be quiet. You just, you can go playing. I'm Alan Imtage, and I sure hope, or you can throw in something in there if you want to try a few of them. That's fine. Okay. All right. I'm Alan Imtage, and I share hope. Now, let me see if I can, we can edit all of this out. So. Um, yeah, I'm Alan Entage. Hope is real. And I share hope. Um, I'm Alan Entage. Have hope. And I share hope. Those are great. Those are great. I, I love them all, but I especially like that middle one. I've, that's really good. Okay. Um, wow. Now, can you tell me something? What's, um, what's, the, what's the background on this? What's the, uh, the, what's the, the source of this? Yeah. Um, so here's, here's how this works. So I was just recovering from uh, an abusive past, uh, abusive dad, and um, going through a lot of counseling, kind of finding myself, not kind of, definitely suicidal about 10 years ago. And it struggled with that since I was an early teen and had no idea what was causing me to just not be able to function at work and um, family starting to melt down and all this stuff going on. My wife really finally convinced me to go to counseling. And, you know, in like five minutes of just starting at the beginning and tell me your story, you know, like a counselor would say, the guy's like, okay, stop right there, you know? So not that everything's not that everything's about your past and you can't blame everything on, you know, somebody who hurt you in the past, but it set me on a journey of regaining my heart. And the hardest part of that for me has not been breaking cycles of, of addiction or, or trying to work through, you know, tendencies towards suicide or whatever. The hardest part has been regaining hope and just finding a reason that it actually matters. And so that's kind of been the hardest thing long term. So for me, it was a journey of finding people I could reference and say, now that person's come through something tough, so I probably can too. And then as I started collecting these stories, people started saying, man, you need to share these with somebody else. And long story short, it turned into actually recording them and then pushing them out via podcast. It's simple as that. And this is as complicated as it gets. Okay. You know, cool. really simple, but people like you have been so gracious to share your time and hope with me and now just thousands of others. I'm, uh, I'm amazed that people are out there needing hope like I am. I thought I was the only one for a while there. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um, so. How, how did you guys find me, by the way? I'm just sort of curious. Yeah, we were. So, again, this thousand people all around the world. We started looking in the Caribbean era area and then looking in technology looking in those kind of different and you, your name started crossing paths a couple of ways so we thought man this guy's a leader and he's he's from a great part of the world that we all love to go on vacation to and <laughs> <laughs> so we figured it'd be worth a shot and i'm really glad you said yes all right well, a few random questions here that i've just jotted down so um 
give it uh, um, 30, 60 second answers if you can, because I got four or five here. Okay. How in the world, so most people that are on this thing reference some sort of religious belief, meaning a faith in, in God of some sort. Um, not many people come from it from an atheistic standpoint. I think that's really fascinating. So as an atheist, you have hope and and a lot of people with a religious background, no matter what religion they come from, say, oh, well, an atheist can't have hope. Just explain that. You really do have hope. It's Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I don't think those, I mean, for me, those things aren't connected at all. Um, I mean, I, I find religion fascinating, but I'm not a believer. Um, but, um, uh, you know, for me, I, I look at the universe with wonder. I mean, I, I look at the universe with awe and, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, there, there's nothing more awe-inspiring for me than to, to lie on my back on a, on a warm summer's night and to look into the, uh, the, the, a dark sky and think that every one of those things is that points of light is a is a is a star with you know maybe with planets and other beings and and you know and as far as the eye can see as far as we can see back you know the billions and trillions of galaxies and stars and it just amazes me and it fills me with wonder and mm -hmm. wonder is a form of hope i mean wonder is is you know if you can be awed by that kind of stuff it's you are you're looking out there saying oh my you know Good Lord, let me. What what could I find? You know what 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 you know amazing thing. The, the the Earth alone is an amazing thing. You know, can you imagine what a thousand of them would be? You know, yeah, that's, you know, yeah, awesome. Or, or, uh, that's that's great. Okay, then you've got um, Barbados. I mean, wow, really? So you're from Vacation Land? <laughs> is it? Yeah. Did you grow up surfing, or did you grow up in a regular house? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I spent a lot of time. Uh, a lot of my buddies surf. I did. Uh, I, I preferred boogie boarding than to, than, than longboard. Awesome. Um, so um, uh, so I did. Yeah, but I spent. You know, I used to sleep on the beach and get up early in the morning and go go in the water when the surf was up and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I did all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a great place. Listen, it's a it's a wonderful place to grow up. It's a wonderful place. Uh, uh, it's you know it's safe and it has a great education system and everybody knows everybody else. Uh, so you know it's it's a it's a wonderful place to grow up and I would and I and you know if I had kids I, I'd want them to grow up there as well. I had a particular set of circumstances that you know made it isolating for me, but it doesn't you know for a lot, a lot of people that's not the case. So you know, <laughs> okay. it's, a All and right. it's warm. Yeah, it is. It is nice. Robots. So. Great comments there. I'm fascinated by that direction as well. Coolest concept or idea you see out there on the future? If you just say, wow, that's something fun, what's out there? Oh, I'm not even sure. Oh, there's so many things. Um, okay. The thing that really gets me going, and even though it's been superseded subsequently, but um, I don't know if you've ever heard of IBM's Watson. Watson mm -hmm. was the thing that won Jam yeah, Jeopardy. Yeah, the Jeopardy thing, yeah. 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 Well, they're now applying it to all kinds of fields and, and medicine and that kind of stuff. And, you know, the idea that um, you could have a computer program that is quote unquote smart enough, that you could feed it all the information that you ever knew about a disease, hmm. and that in the future, it's not quite there yet, but in the future, it can then sit down and, and really, you know, go through 2,000 medical papers and tell you what the best you know, invent new treatments and invent cures for diseases and invent, you know, in a way that human be and no one human being ever could mm -hmm. because we could never absorb that amount of information. That kind of um, artificial intelligence is just, just all, all inspiring. It is. That's a great point. All right. And uh, 12 country tour? Yeah. What was your favorite spot? Just pick one. Oh. It's hard to do. Yeah, the world's an amazing place, isn't it? It's it's got to be Barcelona. Ah, oh. got to be Barcelona. Mm. I I mean, it was an amazing trip, and it's a whole story in its own right, uh, and it's all documented on Facebook. But <laughs> um, but it's uh, Barcelona. Oh, it's just oh. it's the perfect city as far as I'm concerned. It's perfect. It's it's everything that I would want in a place to live. This place has. It is it is the food, the people, the art, the architecture. Oh. oh. You know, Adriano De Santos was a guest on the program a couple months ago. He's a, a professional boxer, um, 
one of the best in Brazil. And anyway, he's traveled in you know all over the world in almost over forty countries, I think. And he's uh, he mentioned Barcelona as his one of his top three. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I keep hearing I think that. I'm quite up to eighty countries yet. But I'm wow, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> I maybe actually this trip may have brought me to eighty. I, I have I haven't gone back and come to these. That's a good looking passport right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last last one, man. If you just need to pop something in the earbuds and, and get your brain in gear and have some fun, what are you gonna listen to? Favorite track, favorite album? What you got? Um There's a song from last year. Oh god, there's so many of these. Um there's a song from the last year that really always puts a smile on my face. Um, it's called No Place I'd Rather Be. I don't know if you remember. No Place I'd Rather it's, Be. Uh, yeah, it, um, uh, I'll, it's featuring a particular singer, so let me get it right. Uh, I'm going to look yeah. up here too. See, is a song by um, Clean Bandit, and the artist is Jess Glynn, is the, uh, is the, is the featured singer. Um, and it's on YouTube, and it's called No Place I'd Rather Be, and it just it, it talks about a uh, this woman talking about the fact that there's you know there's no place that she'd rather be, no matter where she is, hmm. she's with her partner. There's hmm. no other place she'd rather be, hmm. and it, there's something just happy and 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 joyful about the uh, about the song. Yes, I think I found it here. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's a good one. All right, man, can't tell you enough. You just hammered it out of the <laughs> ballpark. I love it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. sir, you've been a privilege to talk to, man. Just enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and I'm, I'm really glad that you're willing to share with us. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, one person. I'll tell you somebody that you need to put on your list. Yeah. And he's here, actually. He's visiting me right now. Um, uh, look up Sir Robin Knox Johnson. Okay. I'll, I'll hold on. I'll, I'll type that for you. Hold on a second. Sir Robin and Knox Johnson. Uh, J Johnston. Johnston. Okay. Hold on. Let me. Uh, where the hell is the damn? They keep changing this. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the Skype message thing. Uh, uh, Sir Robin Knox. Got it. Robin is he's actually visiting me right now. Yeah. Um, Robin is uh, a um, the uh, I'm going to tell him that I said him up. Um, uh, he is the world's first non-stop solo circumnavigator. No way. Okay. Wow. And Robin is 76 years old. Uh, he's one of the most positive people you'll ever meet. Amazing person. Um, and he's been staying with me for a couple of days. The other person to put on the list, although it, this might be harder to do, actually, because he's kind of shy, but uh, it's, um, is Dilip, who is also staying with me. Um, Dilip is the first Indian solo circumnavigator of the world. Um, and um, they are... Um, I spent my 50th birthday with Robin uh, sailing. Robin had just sailed from uh, France to Guadeloupe. Wow. Single-handedly, solo, for a race at 75 years old. Now, imagine, now, this is a 60-foot boat that, that this, with an 85-foot mast, right? Wow. It's a Lamborghini, okay? Yeah. The, right? It travels anywhere between 14 and 16 knots. Man. Um, and it is he sang, he sailed it solo across the Atlantic to, to on a ra in a race, um, and came in third, right? Um, this, and there's no mechanical assist. All right, all of this is done right. by hand. Right? Yeah. There's, no, there's no electric winches or any of this stuff. This is all being done manually. <laughs> he was up at the top of the mast this afternoon fixing uh, a, a light and a bosun's <laughs> chair 85 feet up. Wow. Uh, and uh, Robin is an amazing guy, um, and you definitely need to put your, put him on your list because he is um, incredibly positive. He's done a lot. He's doing tremendous amount of work with youth, 
um, trying to get them into sailing, you know, um, inner city youth in England. He's, he's British, as you can probably tell from yeah. this. So, um, and um, he's a wonderful guy. And he's been visiting me here just for, for a few days. If he's a sir, does that make him a knight? Yes, he is a knight. Wow. Well, those are a dime a dozen. My dad's a knight, too. So. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm <so sorry. laughs> it is true. My dad is also a knight. But, but, there, but yes, he is a knight. Yes. What did your dad do to get knighted? Um, he worked for the uh, worked for a lot of international organizations and and the government in Barbados. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And then, uh, Dilip, me, you think we can get him on the phone too? It makes me a princess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> original joke. But it works anyway. hey, it's a good one. Uh, so, uh, is it Dilip? Is I'm, am I saying his name right? Dilip, yes. Dilip is the Indian, Indian, well, he didn't do it nonstop. R um, Robin was the, broke the l sort of last major, you know, you know, sort of, it, it was the equivalent of climbing Mount, Mount Everest. Yeah, it's so he didn't land. Robin didn't land once. Okay. Um, and and I was at sea for, I think it was nine months altogether. Wow. Um, and, uh, and was knighted as a result of that. Um, but has done tremendous amount of work, you know, uh, mm. promoting sailing and that kind of stuff. Let me tell you something. Traveling in the world with Robin around sailors, you might, I mean, the only thing they, do, they don't do is literally get genuflect. He's a god. Yeah, he's yeah. a god. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. I'd love to talk to both of those guys. Okay, so on your way out of here then, this is obviously, I, I'll record this, but it's not part of your interview. Uh, introduce those two because if they say yes I love having a friend introduce so we've had that multiple times where somebody says hey this is you know Alan Imtage and you're about to listen to Sir Robert Knox Johnston first world servant whatever you know I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna hit mute again hit me up with an interview I mean uh, an intro for both of those guys I'm Alan Imtage and you're about to listen to an interview with Sir Robin Knox Johnston the world's first solo non-stop sailing navigate circumnavigator of the world sorry let me do that again because i said world twice um i'm alan entage and you're about to listen to an interview with sir no robin knox johnston the world's first solo circumnavigator Hi, my name is Alan Emtage. You're about to listen to an interview with Dilip Gandhi, India's first solo circumnavigator. Okay? Perfect. Got okay. it. Man. We're going to get Dilip. Dilip might be hard. He's kind of shy. Uh, but but Robert, Robin will probably, Rob, Robin will probably do it. Well, tell Dillip he should quit doing things that are so noteworthy so people won't bother him. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Actually, <laughs> the reason he took it was because he could spend a year on the water and not talk to anybody. <laughs> That's a great reason. I think I want times like that sometimes. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, it's been great. Man, can't thanks enough. Alan Imtage, wonderful conversation. Keep doing what you're doing, and I hope to talk again soon. Cool, no problem. Where are you, Chris? Memphis, Tennessee right now. Okay. Is that where you live? Yeah, I live here and uh, kind of business is based here. A couple of entrepreneurial ventures that we started and it gives me enough freedom and time to yeah. catch up with people like you and actually get, be the lucky guy who gets to talk. You don't, uh, you don't sound like you're from there. I know. Everybody tells me that. I it's think, uh, no, I have some, my family was born and raised in Florida. So I think yeah. I got that, you know, kind of snowbirdish mix in there yeah <laughs> all right my friend enjoy your afternoon thank you thank you all right Take care, Chris. bye 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 you've just listened to i share hope if you're ready to make a change head to our website at ishareHope.com and claim your free copy of the top 10 actions of hope from world leaders to use hope in your own life thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next time